Welcome to the swing set. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are, but we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing set. Thanks for swinging by. The final line on my business card is pegging enthusiast. One of the most specific sex acts named in a contest by Dan Savage's Savage Love Readers. Pegging is when a woman wearing a strap-on fucks a man in the ass. We've talked about it on and off over the years, always couched in the broader topic of anal play. But tonight, we're going to give it its due. While I may be an enthusiast, there's truly only one person who can be called master on this subject. The progenitor of the Pegging Paradise podcast, Ruby Ryder, is here to talk about it with us. I'm Cooper, and tonight I have with me... Hey, it's Dylan Thomas. Hey, it's Chris Penn. Hi, it's Kat Stark. Please tweet along as you listen to our episode with hashtag SSPodcast. You can find us all on Twitter at Cooper S. Beckett, at Dylan the Thomas, Mr. Underscore Pent, Wet Coast Cat, and Ruby Underscore Ryder. And if you like what we're doing here, you can sign up on our Patreon page to throw us a buck or ten every time we release an episode at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. You can also buy shirts, mugs, and other fun swing set merch at lifeontheswingset.com slash merch. And I can't believe we went an entire episode last week without saying how jealous we are that Ginger is in desire right now. Uh. And that's why she's not with us. And maybe that's why we didn't mention her last week, because, you know, she got the better end of the deal. (laughs) Well, she is getting her pegging on right now, so. Raging jealousy. (laughs) She may have been playing the gangbang, the home game (laughs) in Mexico. Welcome, Ruby. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be here. I've wanted to be on this show for a long time, you guys. We've we've yes. uh, we've kind of wanted that too. Completely, <laughs> uh, I think I I'm going to take this all on me as bad communication, right there. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say that uh, we I have wanted to have you on the show for a long time as well, and clearly. As the host, it was my responsibility to, you know, actually ask. Yeah, we've probably <laughs> talked about you no less than 10 times on yeah. the podcast, so uh, our bad. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm honored. I am totally honored. And and you called me the master. Oh, that's a really interesting you like that. label. I do feel like I have attained a level of mastery. I really do. Well, you... Uh... You are the the go to. You are the name to mention. You know when when you talk about generalized prostate play, then you of course you you talk about Charlie Glickman. But when you talk about specifically pegging, because as we mentioned in the intro, pegging is something that Charlie Glickman is not capable of doing to another man. That's true. So Ruby, I mean you you are the one. <laughs> He knows all about it from the receptive point of view, and I know about all about it from the giving point of view. (laughs) And I was very excited to see you on Comedy Central about two weeks ago on uh, Not Safe with Nikki Glaser. I know. It was the last episode of that that, um, thing with Nikki Glaser was granted 10 episodes, Mm -hmm. and they saved me for last. I mean, I wasn't the only one on that episode, but that was the 10th episode. And I think they actually named it, I broke my dick. And they (laughs) named it that because she got a little wild with the strap on trying to fuck the clay ass. And yeah, you know, and, and, (laughs) Funnily enough, I spent an entire season lusting after Nikki Glaser and then became terrified of her within 15 <laughs> seconds there when she literally fucked her dick right off of herself. Okay, so so yes. here's some technical information and a little bit of back scenes info here. Please. So uh, that was a Fuse Harmony dildo. Mm-hmm. Shouts that out to our friends at Fuse. A Fuse Harmony dildo. 
and and I believe what she had on was a, an Aslan leather a harness, a Jaguar. And I didn't change the O-ring, okay? Because little did I know she was going to go after the, the clay model with such enthusiasm. So that was what the problem was. I didn't, I didn't have the small enough one in there because I don't want to give people the impression that these things break. They don't. We had <laughs> awesome equipment, right? But here's the really funny behind the scenes story about that. So there was the Christina person and Nikki Glazer, and they both had the strap-ons on and that kind of thing, right? They bring the clay butt models out, and they put them on this table. If you look at the episode, you'll see that Christina's is higher than Nikki's. Mm. So first they put them both on the high table, and Nikki said, no, I don't want mine that high. I want it lower. I want you guys to bring in that 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 stool that couch thing from the other room and put it here and put it on that she said that and in that moment me and the two camera guys simultaneously go whoa, whoa, that's the wrong angle i mean we're all because we all <laughs> fuck people right <laughs> we know what the right angle is but the star says no this is what i want to do well she had planned it all along she got up on that thing like a frog and just went she at did. it <laughs> so there it you was, go. The it was the most terrifying story. pegging pose I've ever seen. It was, yeah, it was. It totally was. But I it was clenched. excellent humor. Yes. No, it was. <laughs> so thank you. That Comedy Central thing was quite the wild ride. I'd do it again if given the opportunity, but wow, TV is something else. I'm, I'm sure. So how, let's segue from that uh, to the, the most important question for me is how did you come to pegging? Okay, I have always been what I would describe as anally obsessed. <laughs> as soon as <laughs> as soon as I became sexual, um there was a certain allure of ass play that just grabbed me and never let go. Whenever I would run across things, I had a very um not permissive household is the wrong word for it, but I mean, you know, penthouses were around and Penthouse letters was laying around, and I was 15, so I would just turn straight to the anal section. It didn't really matter in the beginning who was receiving, who was giving. 99% of the time, it was guys doing women, and I'll never forget the cheesy story that I ran across about two couples, and they the women had labeled themselves football widows because their men were always at the bar watching the football game. So they would drink, of course, when they did that. So they came home one day, and the women had two footballs on the ground and had them get naked, bend over them like they were centers, and then they fucked them with strap-ons. And that was like the first ever that I heard about that. It was the first yeah. time I'd ever had that concept that I could actually strap one on and do a guy, right? So it was a bit of an epiphany for me. And then the story went on and got even more cheesy because, you know, then the two big, huge black guys showed up and fucked him too. But, you know, <laughs> that's the way penthouse is. <laughs> As they do. Was somebody getting a pizza delivered? I don't know. Wings, <laughs> I guess, since it was football related. It was so bad. But nonetheless, that was the first time I ever realized that I could actually do that. Wow. So like many people who have some kind of fetish that is rather unusual – and uh, taboo, which this certainly is, I packed it away and labeled it bad and weird and different for, unfortunately, decades. Mm -hmm. And I approached my two ex-husbands with it, but I did it in the manner that Dan Savage says not to, sort of like I had leukemia. Mm -hmm. You know, with that really oh, self-conscious yeah. oh my god i can't believe i'm asking you this you know Where clearly it, it it upsets you so why why would uh they be on board exactly yeah. yeah you're going to judge me for this you're going to think i'm weird and i can't believe and i'm so embarrassed that i'm actually asking you this but this is kind of what i want to do yeah so the chances that they were going to say yes were forget it and of course they said no gently they were nice about it but i didn't have any self-confidence or persistence to pursue those desires so um, they stayed packed away until I divorced my second husband and I was 50 years old. And when you hit 50, things happen. You kind of take a look at your life and go, okay, 
what have I not done that I really want to do? So it was felt like a now or never time. And that was when Pegging Paradise was born. I had a friend who was a web designer and he helped me put up my website. And at first, all I wanted to do was put up my erotica because I'd been writing erotic stories about pegging for decades. Same thing, but hiding them away in the back of the filing cabinet. So I brought them out, dusted them off, put them up there and then realized, hmm, no one's going to come and read these unless I have a blog. <laughs> <laughs> so I started a blog. And honestly, what I did is I immersed myself in learning about it is what I did. Yeah. I put up a Google alert for pegging. I went everywhere they were talking about it. I went to Reddit. I went everywhere and just soaked it all in. And then I got on Adult Friend Finder. And they have a section of Adult Friend Finder that's all the sexual questions. Sure. So I answered those. And one of them was... Describe your favorite sexual fantasy. Well, I have a bit of writing skill, so I thought if I could have anything I wanted, what would that look like? Just what would that look like? And that story to this day is one of the free stories that you can read on my website, peggingparadise.com. It's called Hard should. Times at the Hotel. <laughs> and it just basically describes a kind of a femdom scene where she's coming to the hotel and she calls him and says, I want you naked and hard and holding a glass of champagne for me when I get there and that kind of stuff. And spanking happens and pegging happens and it's all fun and games. So what I totally did not expect is that guys came out of the woodwork saying, please me, please me, mm -hmm. um, you know, with their hands up, up, virtual hands up in the air. So I, up to that point, didn't know all of the fabulous information that I know now. Uh, and Charlie's so good at spreading out there, which is all the physiology and why it's so pleasurable and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't realize that that one thing that I wanted so much to do to men, they wanted me to do to them, and they got tons of pleasure out of it as well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of how it all came to be. And then I picked a guy to start with, but of course I didn't tell him that I was brand new at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you don't, you, you don't want to lead with that. <laughs> exactly. If you're a guy and you're like, oh, I want this woman to fuck me in the ass, you do not want to think that she's never done that before. <laughs> So uh, I told him I had. I told him I had experience. Well, see, I've been a massage therapist for like 26 years and counting. Mm. So I can read bodies really, really well. And I know how to kind of take care of bodies. And I've received anal sex before. Not a lot, but I have. And so I knew how to be careful. So that's pretty much all I needed. I can't say that I did an excellent job, but... He was a really hot fireman. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he was, uh, and Doggy Style was on all fours, and I fucked him and gave him a reach around. Ah, nice. Uh, and he came, and he kind of collapsed on the bed, and he was so wide-eyed. He looked at me, and he said, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Nice. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. You know, actually, on my first date with my partner, Ophelia, um, she pegged me and she had never seen, um, a prostate orgasm before. And this was still very early on in my having of prostate orgasms. So I wasn't certain when or how it would be triggered. And when I have a prostate orgasm, I basically get into the fetal position and shake. She had her hand on the phone to call the, the front desk at the hotel. Oh my God. And I was like, no, no, this is fine. It happens sometimes. We're all happy. <laughs> this is excellent. <laughs> Just give me a moment. Mm, that's so awesome. That was big first date material right there. I, you, I was going to say, yeah. best first date story ever. <laughs> and we're still together today. I've had men write me and tell me that that has happened with their partners. And it, it has upset their women partners so much. To see their man in such a vulnerable, completely open space mm. that it, you know, they couldn't deal. And they said, no, I don't want to do this. Wow. So sad. Wow. So yeah. sad. Well, it is, it is a completely different type of orgasm. That's the, the best I can describe it is from my friends who have uh, squirting orgasms. It sounds like the same things. You know, the, yes. the, the way the waves move and the, um, the sort of unpredictability of aftershocks. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's really uh, an incredible uh, thing that I, I try to, you know, you, tr- you can only tell guys so many times that it's an amazing experience. <laughs> and they're either going to get on board and try it or they're not. Yeah, I'm I'm still kind of chasing that train. I've had I've had some a fair bit of prostate play and I've been pegged a couple of times, but I still haven't really had that kind of like shattering prostate orgasm. I don't know. Well, it's funny the the switch flips and I've heard the exact same thing about squirting. Yeah. Is once the switch flips, like I can have a prostate orgasm from mild genital stimulation now. Wow. And it's sometimes a bit like it because it's so intense. I sometimes wish I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> much like squirters. Yeah. Much like okay. squirters. Yeah. As a squirter, I would say much like squirting. <laughs> uh, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's it's hard to complain about such an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> so indeed, indeed. So for me, other other than the basics of still uh, having things in my butt, which is something that I'm working through, um, and, and there are plenty of resources out there for that. I'm still trying to wrap my head around uh, changing uh, about the change in play because I'm so used to giving different kinds of play to somebody uh and i very rarely receive anything and i especially uh am am very rarely in a position where i'm uh i was about to use the word compromise and i don't mean compromise i mean like uh i i don't vulnerable yes i i'm not i'm not vulnerable when i'm being played with even when i am so i'm still trying to wrap my my head and my feelings around that That's actually quite a common problem for, or a challenge. I don't really want to call it a problem. It's a challenge for men because bless their hearts, they're just so programmed to give their partners pleasure. And so it's a really active thing. And they very rarely have the opportunity to completely let go and just receive. And that's what pegging is all about, is letting go and receiving completely. Way to do the best because if you don't open up and just completely receive, you know, anal sex is not nearly as enjoyable as it could be. So that is definitely a challenge. That's a challenge when it comes to equipment selection. I can't tell you how many times I hear guys say, So I'm picking out this equipment, you know, and I'm going to introduce my girlfriend to pegging or my wife or whatever. And, but I want her to get something out of it, too. And I'm like, okay, one thing at a time. <laughs> she needs to learn how to fuck you first. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> or fuck, period. <laughs> so, yeah, that can definitely be a challenge. But I think it's so healthy. I don't know. That's an interesting word. It's just an, an awesome thing to do for yourself to experience something from completely the other side of the bed, if you will. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what it's like to just give someone complete control, which is why sometimes in conjunction with pegging, men really enjoy being restrained or tied up because then Mm -hmm. they don't even have to think about it. They can't do anything. Mm. uh, Dylan, do you have a hard time not uh, touching a person who's playing with you? Like if you're getting a blowjob, are you one of those people who it's like, okay, now I'm going to rub your shoulders. I'm going to do something because I can't just lay here and receive. Yeah. I, I'd say the number of times that I've been able to completely retreat, um, I'm going to say into myself for lack of better words, retreat into myself and just accept what my senses are telling me and what people are doing to me. Yeah. Uh, probably less than five. And mm-hmm. it's not that I don't have vulnerable people around me. It's just, I don't uh, make that, a destination. So I Dylan, guess. while Tonya is getting gang banged, <laughs> uh, someone can tie you down and the women can just have their way with you. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. Yeah. See? I mean, does that sound like a fun thing, Dylan? <clears throat> uh, it absolutely does sound like a fun thing. <laughs> well, that's a I good think, thing. I think it really helps me get into the headspace of relaxing. Cause I, I haven't been pegged in a few years and that's about the amount of time that I've, it's been since I've had um, really a dominant partner and, I think that really kind of helps me just kind of sink into it and relax the muscles, relax my brain, and just really kind of enjoy it and, yeah, be hands off. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, exactly. It's, it's interesting because I I remember talking about it with my husband like probably 15, 17 years ago, and it was just so a no-go for him. 
But, you know, over time, and I think just like sometimes age has a part of that of, of getting to the point where you're able to let go a lot of those things that in our 20s were like big and scary, but in our 40s, it's like, yeah, that's cool. Let's try it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and pegging has become something for us that has has become a really awesome part of, of our repertoire and relationship. Um, but it it took us a while to, you know, figure it out because neither of us had ever done it. And we've really noticed that that him on top where he actually has more control has been really effective for us since I tend to get enthusiastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, so that sort of took took the ability of me to be too enthusiastic until we get to the point where he's like, okay, fuck me, and then I can go to town. But um, <laughs> it, it gets us to a place where he's really ready for that. Mm-hmm. Because usually I'm a lot more ready than he is. <laughs> so Dylan, that's a possibility for you is be the one in control. Okay. That's uh, excellent leg muscle work too there, Dylan. Oh my God, you. yes. And uh, considering the amount of squats I do thanks to sports, uh, yeah. that should not be a problem. There so. you go. Yeah. <laughs> so while you're thinking about that, Dylan, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we'll be more back with more pegging and ruby rider on Life on the Swings at the podcast. Life on the Swing Set has now spent four years gradually ramping up our presence at the greatest place on earth, Desire Resort and Spa in Cancun, Mexico. The most wonderful part of Swing Set's annual trip to paradise has been the diversity of those couples that have chosen to join us. We've had nudists, polyamorous quads, couples looking to explore, longtime swingers, exhibitionists, and those just curious. We also run the gamut on sheer variety of geekery. For our fifth year, we decided to pursue aggressive expansion and take the resort to ourselves in 2016. That's right, Swing Set is doing a takeover. For the first time, Swing Set will have the run of the resort to organize the theme nights we want to enjoy, to plan the activities without worrying about getting out of anybody's way, and to guarantee the most awesome group of people to ever pull up on this bit of beach on the Riviera Maya. We're already over 60% booked and getting down to the wire. Come with us and Char Travel this November 5th through 12th for this most amazing experience for a week we're calling Choose Your Own Adventure. We've sold out every year, and only a deposit will hold a room. Go to ssdesire.com for more information. We'd love to have you join us in paradise. Hey, bro. We're doing some squats over there. Yeah, I'm doing some squats over here. You you, you, you riding that cock real good? Yo. Not I don't, right now. I don't think I've Not ever right heard that that type of phrase in bro speak before. <laughs> you riding that cock real good? Well, you know, I, I mean, mean getting my workout and get my uh, get workout. My workout, yeah. yeah. You can make it just a tad more specific and say, hey, bro, you riding her cock real good? There you, there you go. go. There you yes. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of like I'm in my happy place now. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just give a real quick bro fist to my bro over here. It's like, yeah, that's right. Fucking right here. Yeah. <laughs> real boss. Right. When it comes to online dating, we here at the Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. Welcome back to Life on the Swing Set Podcast. <laughs> Ruby, have you noticed a dramatic increase in media about pegging, say, in the last year? I have. I think it's been the last couple of years, but definitely the last year. I mean, 
You know, there was that article, I can't remember where it was, declaring 2016 the year of pegging. And, you know, they do all kinds of stuff like that. Of course, I was thrilled about it. But, um, yeah, there's a lot more coverage about it. I was quite thrilled that Comedy Central would take it on, which was awesome. Well, and and last year, it was what got me watching Broad City because I saw that there was a show (laughs) that had pegging, actual pegging in it. And it was like, well, okay, well, that's worth watching at least an episode. And obviously, Broad City is probably one of the best shows on TV at the moment. But mm-hmm. And it was presented really well. Very positively. Thing. Yeah, it yeah. was very positive. And, and, you know, I read an article and, and they talked about how they planned that out very carefully because they wanted to be very uh, present. They wanted to be very careful in the way that they presented it and make sure that they did a good job with it. The hysterical part was the further episode that they did where Hillary Clinton actually came <laughs> on. Yes. There. I pegged. I, I couldn't believe that the words I pegged were said to a <laughs> yeah. presidential candidate who, if she didn't know what they were, <laughs> would have had it explained to her. But I have a feeling that she and Bill are not strangers to the pegging. Maybe she was just pandering. Who knows? <laughs> You're never going to know with her. <laughs> now who's getting political? <laughs> the Canadian and you, Dylan. I was going to say, I feel like Justin would be good with it. I bet, yeah. And now yeah. I'm in a really, really happy place. All the time. Mm. I like to think mm. of, of the Trudeaus and the Obamas <laughs> swapping in fact Ooh. that's that's really all oh i my. thought about when when our our two countries were going through their love affair with those four when they came to visit so that's here's your great. question oh, yeah. here's yes. your question my question were, were you thinking about the men being together and the women being together I was thinking about one of those, uh, you know, great king size bed foursomes where there are no boundaries, <laughs> you know, because Obama and Trudeau, man, I'm oh, down. I Well, Dang, hey, when, when Obama first campaigned, I fell in love with that man bestriding, uh, yeah. you know, striding across the beach, you know, shirt off. You remember that picture? That yep, Obama I smile. Yeah. Those <laughs> that, yeah, just getting charming, flashed. charming like, and finally... probably a very gentle lover. <laughs> Finally, a hot president. That's what I thought. <laughs> and I would love to see Michelle uh, rocking a, a strap on. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. would love that. Like she isn't yeah. already packing. Half what? Basis. Come on. <laughs> oh, with those biceps and a cock? Man. Mm-hmm. <sighs> when are you sending that, Obad? <laughs> so I, I just, I want to I wanna say to my Republican friends, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so that, to to my mind, that brings up the interesting part of of what is commonly associated with pegging, and you know the misconceptions of okay, when you watch pegging porn, if that's all you ever see about pegging, then you assume that all of those things are inextricably connected to pegging itself, which is completely untrue. However, it's not unusual to find a whole bunch of different things overlapping fetishes, if you will. And, you know, I use the word fetishes loosely because I know that technically it means that you can't get off unless you do it. But, you know, fetishes, desires, whatever. So, but uh, the the whole dominance thing, see, that was something that I uncovered about me. And, you know, when I look back, I had a lot of clues because (laughs) every just, you know, like 99% of all fantasies that I've ever had to get myself off I am doing something to someone, <laughs> not the other way around. So, you know, to know that I'm dominant, yeah, that was kind of a no-brainer. But I didn't step into it until after I started doing the pegging thing. I think it's also uh, often connected to cuckolding and it's often connected to uh, – cross dress. Wh- uh, yeah, cross-dressing. And the, the very conception, the reason why a lot of guys are afraid of it is because, of course, it'll make them gay. That one always blows my mind because yeah. if you're fucking with your wife, no matter <laughs> what you're doing with what toy, you're with a woman. Well, so I mean, yeah. you know, there is the button way deep inside the asshole that d- will make you gay. <laughs> the magic one that it's, suddenly makes you crave hairy, muscular bodies. I yeah, know. I know. About that one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful about that one. 
Well, I mean, that's what that's one hell of a focus on genitalia, right? It's like if if the only thing that defines our sexuality is the position of our genitals, then oh my god, what are we gonna do, right? Well, it's it's that, and there is, uh, you know, Charlie has talked a lot about this. How there's this almost unavoidable shame that comes along with uh, male anal play. And it's um, to a point where it manifests. You know, one of the things that I talk about when I do the pegging demos is that um, it's very likely I will become overwhelmed by a shamey feeling at some point. Mm. And it's not something that I can logic my way around. And um, I was talking to Charlie Glickman about this, and he said that it, it is very common in general for any anal stimulation to almost have a counteract uh, feeling of shame for, for a lot of people. And it's because of cultural implications. It's because of, um, you know, if, if you find yourself uh, even occasionally fantasizing about a man when you are and identify as straight, there is the in, intense shame that can surround that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that the, the reward is so great but there is so much intrinsic shame within it for a lot of us. Oh, for, as a woman, I totally have that happen to me too. And I'm learning to identify that that's what it is. When I go into the like dark ennui place after, um, so I'm now able to go, oh yeah, that's because I was doing butt stuff. But until I was able to identify that, it was a scary, scary place. Wow. How about you, Mr. Pent? Have you ever experienced that? Um, no, I, I think I've actually like, you know, it's a limited set of experiences there, but mm. I've, I've felt it once or twice. Um, usually when I've tried it in a group setting, but one-on-one -on -one, it's actually been, um, it hasn't happened to me, which, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot more factors that play there, but, yeah. um, you know, obviously the cultural shame of like, oh, I'm doing this in public. Like, yeah, that's definitely there. Which is a little bit of a different thing because it's the public thing. I mean, sure, uh, right. right. One of the things involved with pegging that can be a roadblock sometimes on the female part of the equation is women many times have a pretty strong reaction to actually strapping on a fake cock. And hey. I didn't even know that this was a thing because I never had that. Right. <laughs> And so, you know, people told me about it and I said, really, this is a thing? It's like, oh, yeah, women have a very tough time with this sometimes. So I had to investigate it and, and really uh, honor it and talk about it and that kind of thing just to inform people. But getting back to the shame on the male part, um, I get letters so often about that and I get letters talking about how guys have found my website, they read all kinds of stuff. And it helped them feel more normal and it helped them yeah. let go of the shame. As a matter of fact, I had business cards made. I got a new logo, which I'm really proud of. It's totally awesome. So I had new business cards made. And on the back of my business card, it says, shame is the silent saboteur of sexual satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know. A lot of alliteration. See, this is why you're the like master. I made it up movie. myself. This is, why we, this, this is why you're here tonight on our, on our 250th episode. Whoa. Congratulations. I feel that like that deserves us. So say we all or so say <laughs> so, yeah. a harumph oh, at, at the very least. Feel free. Spread it all over the place. I'm not going to trademark that one. That's, no, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Speaking of which, how cool is it that for our 250th episode, we got pegged? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it is very cool. I'm only on like 132 or something. Only nothing. <laughs> that, that's. I know, it's, I know, uh, I'm getting there. Fab in, in podcast uh, terms. Actually, the next podcast episode that I'm working on is a special one for all the cross-dressers. Oh, very Ooh. cool. So they've written in with all of their stories, and I read them, and I love those ones that are special. I had one like that for the bisexual guys, and what I always tell them is, please just write in and tell me your truth. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment here. I don't care whether you're on the down low. I don't care. I just want to know how cross-dressing fits in your life right now and how you feel about it. Yeah. 
And some of the things that I get are just amazing. And of course, I did an episode like that for the women too, their, their stories. And everyone loved that one because that's more unusual to hear women tell stories about it. About the experience of it? About pegging, period. Yeah, mm-hmm. their experiences mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. When, when you first strapped on a, a cock, did you get the, um, the sort of body discordance feeling when you looked down? No. Like it was meant to be. I didn't, but I was sorely lacking in the proper skill set and musculature. <laughs> <laughs> I so yes. hear that about the muscles. Yes. All the time. Because as I tell the people in my classes and on my podcast all the time, fucking someone is an athletic event. And once you, as a woman, strap one on and fuck someone, fuck your partner, you will appreciate your partner so much more (laughs) because it takes balance and strength and endurance and multitasking and (sighs) all of those. I will say there are not many things that men can say, see, (laughs) and have it be okay. Right. But that's that that might be it. That might be the one. We can I say don't know. See, it's hard. <laughs> but yeah, it's I so to... well deserved because I mean, you guys experience multitasking to a degree that we will never ever truly appreciate <laughs> because you have to have enough fun to keep it hard. We don't have to worry about that, right? <laughs> and you also have to have not too much fun so you don't end it too soon. See, we don't even have to have those factors in there. Yeah, true. So, yeah. Sometimes I go over the hump where, I, where I'm where i so concentrating on not ending too soon that it's just not going to happen tonight, by the way. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. That's, that's a difficult thing to wrap your head around, too, when that shift happens. Yeah. It's just like, okay, now I could uh, – now, I mean, I can uh, – uh, <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll keep going. Yeah, well, we, it's it's good. <laughs> My suggestion is to go ahead and let it happen, and then strap one on and keep going. <laughs> ah, there you go. Huh? Seriously. What kind of um, harnesses do you find work the best for men? Well, there are the the uh, spare parts deuce. I think is probably my favorite. Mm. It's all the spare parts harnesses are made so well. There is no yeah. getting out that. They're absolutely amazing. And it's made so that you can use it for dual penetration if you're hard. Mm-hmm. Or it's got a nice little silky kind of space for your bits to hang out or your dangly bits <laughs> while you've got that other one above your cock. Yeah. Cool. So – What I've heard from men who have done this, I've heard two things. And here's the plus and the minus that I've heard. One, the plus would be this guy said, okay, until I strapped one on, uh, I really just, it it was just a whole, it was a revelation when I actually strapped one on because because of that multitasking. I could never truly focus 100% on her. So once I strapped one on, I didn't have to worry about that. It was going to be hard. I could, I know I wasn't going to come too soon. And so I was able to focus 100% on doing exactly what was going to get her off or what she liked the best or that kind of thing. He said it was like a revolutionary thing for him. So that was the good one. Another guy said, okay, so, but if you strap one on and it's above your cock, you've had a certain angle to this for a really long time with your own cock and this is a different angle so it can make it difficult sometimes Mm -hmm. (laughs) it could definitely make it difficult you know going kind of fast and maybe that kind of thing and pulling out and and doing something unexpected so i heard that too okay we're gonna do a quick break and when we come back we will talk about uh, a good beginner kit and then a good advanced kit We'll be right back with Life on the Swings at the podcast. We all come to a point in our lives when we finally ask the ever-looming question, is this all there is? And most of us coast along afterwards, just accepting that the answer to that question is probably, yeah, this is it. 
Sometimes, though, we're lucky. Sometimes we run into the right people at the right time. The young couple at the center of a life less monogamous, the new novel by Cooper S. Beckett, are about to meet a couple of swingers, and this moment will change their lives. Cooper's first novel is already receiving acclaim, and you can pick it up today, direct from the author at lifelessmonogamous.com, as a signed paperback, DRM-free ebook, or audiobook, read by Cooper himself and me, Kat Stark. Use promo code SWINGSET at checkout to save 10%. You can also get Cooper's memoir, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, as an ebook, signed paperback, or audiobook at mylifeontheswingset.com. Enjoy more Cooper today in book form. Hey there, Swinger Doc here. Welcome to the Medical Mailbag. I'm happy to be here with the Swing Set crew for this episode to help tackle your sexy thoughts, ideas, and questions as they relate to your sexual health and pleasure. Our questions come from brave fellow Swing Setters as well as other adventurous folks from the Twitterverse. So look for me on Twitter at The Swinger Doc. Our question today comes from a female listener and has to do with Viagra. Her question goes like this. My husband and I have been married for quite some time, and over the years, he's had some problems with his erection. He went to the doctor, and he was prescribed Viagra, and this seems to help a lot. But my question is, I have times when it's hard for me to have an orgasm, and I read that his Viagra could help me too. Can I take it also? So thanks. I get this question often, and it is pretty interesting. Viagra was developed and approved by the FDA to create what I like to call Penis 2.0 the new pharmaceutically enhanced model of penis to help men with erectile dysfunction. So judging by its billions of dollars in sales, Viagra might be the greatest invention for, for men since canned beer. Well, at least if you happen to be a guy who can't get it up on command. But the question is, can it also create vagina 2.0? So Viagra works by increasing blood flow to the penis and that causes erection. So some have thought by increasing blood flow to the vagina, perhaps a woman may have orgasms where there have been none before, or perhaps makes the ones she have all that much better. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well, studies done to test its effect on women have shown less than amazing results, probably because men and women are fundamentally different when it comes to desire and arousal. Increased blood flow down below has caused some women who've tried the drug to experience some small changes in physical arousal, but now the bad news. It seems to have little, if any, effect whatsoever on desire. So also remember, nothing comes for free. These drugs have side effects like headache, indigestion, diarrhea, flushed skin, and dizziness. And Viagra doesn't mix well with certain medications, especially cardiac drugs like nitroglycerin. Not so sexy, huh? Plus, it's always best not to take any prescription medication unless it's been given to you by your physician or healthcare provider. So what else can you take? Well, for starters, be sure to see your gynecologist to make sure all of your female parts are in working order. And there are also a few options that you can discuss when you get there. First, perhaps you don't even need medication. There are many things that account for the lack of big O that can't even be fixed with medication. This is an entire show topic unto itself. Second, depending upon what your doctor thinks could be causing your lack of orgasm, he or she may consider hormonal therapy or other medications like Adi, which can boost your sex drive if you think that's the issue. But to decide if a medicine is right for you, check with your doctor. Many products are advertised as herbal Viagra or natural sexual enhancement products, but no clinical trials have shown that these work for erectile dysfunction or female sexual dysfunction. So you're going to have to make your own call on those based on the absence of good hard evidence. But beware, in some cases, chemical adulterants similar to Viagra have been found in many of these supplements. And the FDA has even gone so far as to warn that sexual supplements that claim to work as well as prescription products are very likely to contain a contaminant. So perhaps too good to be true. My opinion, I'd probably avoid these things if I were you. When they figure out how to bottle up orgasms and sell them as a food additive, I'll be the first one in line. So thanks for your question. So thanks for swinging by for another edition of the Medical Mailbag. 
Please be sure to keep your questions coming and send your many sexy thoughts, ideas, and questions to at the Swinger Doc on Twitter, or feel free to leave us a voicemail at 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. Until next time, be safe, but be sexy. We at The Swing Set believe that being risk-aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts, and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at The Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at The Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, the lucky bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com. Welcome back to Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. We are here with Ruby Rider, and we are talking about pegging for our 250th episode. And if you've noticed I mentioned it twice, it's because I didn't think about it before we recorded. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, we have these uh, milestones that come up, uh, and, and they're kind of cool. Uh, Ruby, you're in great company. Our 200th episode had uh, Dan Savage on. Mm-hmm. <gasps> wow. So, yeah. yeah, to to be on one of our milestones uh, is kind of a big deal. Because <laughs> you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> I'm sitting a little taller in my chair over here. Excellent. <laughs> Her cock's getting harder. As we I was going to say, like, <laughs> thank you, Ken. <laughs> well, Ruby, as a... As like me, you are a person of many toys. What is your go-to if you if you know nothing else about the situation? Let's let's take the the gentleman out of it uh, for the planning stage. What is your go-to harness and cock? You're asking me this is a really interesting space in time because yeah. what I am working on right now with Sport Sheets International is Ruby Rider Strap On Starter Kit. Ooh, oh my. right. So oh, and I hope you put swing set on the list uh, to review that one. It- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that, and we are fine tuning it. One of the things that I really wanted it to w- work well with is to go beyond just a very basic beginner kit, and then you know you're done with that beginner kit, and then you move on to something else and spend more money because sure. money is often a consideration. So for the first time in the harnesses, I had them put a hole through it because I wanted it to be okay for doubles. Yeah. When I find and I find that most of the early kits or the less expensive ones are the ones with the the pad on the back and the the cock attaches right in front. Yes, the one that sits on your pubic bone <laughs> and is yeah. quite uncomfortable, by the way. <laughs> uh huh. So uh, let's see. But right now, yes. Before the Ruby Rider Strap on Starter Kit, which would of course be your your go to when when course. it comes out. Of course, of course. So of course, and of course, the dildo is going to be red. <laughs> of course. Nice. Nice. So anyway, you know. I really, really like the spare parts harnesses. Yeah. But I have to say that their couture harnesses are my favorite. They sent me a Sasha. Okay. And I know it's not everybody's first choice because it covers up the lady bits. And sometimes that part of play is really important for people. Mm. Maybe the play goes back and forth a little bit. Maybe she wants to do something or that kind of thing. So... But that's that's my most comfortable and sexiest choice because it's got the garters. You can put on lace thigh highs. It's really, really feminine. It's got a ruched back right on the butt crack line, so it just makes your butt look gorgeous. Mm. So, yeah, that would be one of my favorite ones. But it, it's not necessarily a starter mm. harness because it's really expensive. You see, I have a very hard time recommending lesser quality harnesses because they are lesser quality yeah. and because you use them for maybe a month or two and then you go buy something else and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and it's one of those things that you you do often in, in sex toys get exactly what you pay for. 
Right. And if your first pegging experience is $20 valuable to you, then go ahead and get the $20 one. If it, it seems like you might enjoy yourself and want to do, try something of, of value, then I, I'd say spend a little more. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to convince people of that. But, you know, if you don't have any money and all you can afford is just the dildo, okay? Then buy the dildo and look up Midori's scarf harness. Oh, yep. oh! I've seen her do this. Yeah, yep. and and it's okay. Tantus, bless their hearts, was they were so kind enough to give me a hoss. Okay, that is like the biggest freaking dildo they have, right? So <laughs> I don't have a harness that will hold that. There is nothing with the O ring big enough, right? right? <laughs> It's so like we that, have the bad dragon, uh, the big bad dragon. Yep. Ah, yes. There, there's nothing that holds that. You hold that. That's it. <laughs> Precisely. So what I've decided I wanted to do was to explore this do-it-yourself scarf harness, which I'd heard about, I'd posted information about before, but I'd never actually tried. And so you got two silk scarves, 60 inches long, and I am not a small woman. I wear size 14. I'm 5'11". And it worked like a charm, and it held that thing just right up against me. It was awesome. So, yeah. That's, that's if great. you don't have any money except to buy a good dildo, then then look that up and ha- make a do-it-yourself harness because that at least will get you through the uh, exploratory period during which, of course, you'll find out that you totally freaking love it, and then you'll go buy a really nice harness. <laughs> I have also uh, been told that if you do one of the dual harnesses, uh, dual dildos, which we we don't like to call uh, harness-free because you should use them with the harness, um, but you wear like a pair of underoos with them and tuck it right out the fly, it often gives you enough support to to maintain it. It will give you enough. This is true. That's a good word to choose. Enough. It will not, give you enough. Not Full support. Right. But enough. Right. So the other choice, if you want to get a harness that is um, not – that will leave your lady bits open, that is a little bit of a different style, is, of course, the Aslan leather harnesses. And the Jaguar is my favorite. And if you happen to be a lovely large woman, then the Minx is the one for you. Definitely. That's my go-to harness for BBW women. Excellent. So we have two favorites at the Beckett household, the the uh, Tesla Beckett household. <laughs> um, it was the Tango Fuse for a long time, mm-hmm. and that was actually the first uh, the 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 one that the Tesla Becketts came together with the Tango. Fuse. <laughs> um, nice. But more recently, we we got. Um, Dylan and I got some of the Enjoy Us, Mm -hmm. the sort of odd modular system. Uh, It's got a giant bulb up front, and then the the cock pops off. And that wasn't – it wasn't our favorite because the big cock is too big and the small cock is too small. Okay. Um, But then we discovered, just just from playing one day, that the Tantus dildos – with the hole for the vibrator <laughs> fit perfectly. I can hear this coming on yep. those. <laughs> and so oh. now we just we just took a two option vibr- uh, dildo system to a huge plethora of options now that we can use the Tantus toys and a number of other ones. Also the dildos that are built to go with the really shitty Vaculock system. Oh, the duck. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but there are a lot of dildos that are decent dildos that just unfortunately are part of that, you know, system that also work with the Enjoy Us toy. Huh. Wow. That's that's a really uh, exciting realization. The best Twitter, the best tweet response to that was this period changes period everything. You Period. never told me this. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm just going nuts right now. Holy oh yeah. Shit. It, it, yeah. And so we've bought several dildos since then. I mean, it's it's not as solid a uh, uh, connection, but it doesn't need to be. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, highly recommend. And the nice thing about this one, um, as of, as opposed to the Tango Fuse, which still definitely needs to be used with a harness, 
is the Enjoy Us has a big enough bulb that uh, Ophelia has no problem holding on to it completely. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes the strapless strap-on that everybody craves. Right. I was given one of those at um, Catalyst Con. Or perhaps it was another show. It's hard to recall. Anyway, it doesn't That's matter. That's where so we I, got ours, and I think you were there. So it's, it's yeah. very possible. So I took that home, and this is another example of, you know, different strokes for different folks, and not everything is going to fit everyone because mm. it's just way too freaking big for me, and it's painful. Oh. So it's mm. not something that I'm real motivated to. Sure to work on uh, having inside me to try because it's just the wrong shape. I guess I am shaped differently on the inside so that it's just not a good fit. Sure. So, you know, I, I couldn't write a good review because I couldn't really use it. I tried to, and I thought, okay, this hurts. So this is not good. I had the same experience with the Share, uh, Fun Factory Share XL. Mm -hmm. The bulb on that's pretty big too, but the Enjoyce is even bigger. So, what do you so, think of the Fuse? The Fuse is awesome, but okay, here is my <laughs> my latest um, crush in Ooh. terms of dildos. Right, it is still in the Fuse line because the Fuse singles, every one of their singles are made so that they can hold a vibe. Right. And the bottom of those are this lovely, it seems like it's this lovely ergonomic sort of engineered um, concave, convex surface that just nestles perfectly between your vaginal lips right where you need it to be. And that vibe, they're so good at vibe placement. Oh, my God. So it's a single... It's not inside me. It's not given my G-spot stimulation, but it's just, it's such a nice fit. Oh, my God. So all of those I love. Very nice. Just depends on the size that the guy can take that I'm fucking. But the fuse is still <laughs> yes. my favorite double. Well, and you know, it's funny. Uh, the One of the times that I've tried to change things up, I tried the New York uh, Toy Company dildo, and the what makes that one distinct is it's very... Very pliable mm -hmm. and has a core that you can bend. And I realized very quickly that the fact that it was very pliable was I was pushing back against it too much. Oh, wow. And it was becoming uncomfortable pressing from the outside. And so I vastly preferred something like the, uh, the Tango Fuse uh, because it was far more solid. Well, yeah, and yes, again, different strokes for different folks because some guys love those really, really soft ones. Sure. In fact, that's all they can really handle. And other ones, um, there are actually strap-ons out there. They're designer strap-ons. Um, sheer, sheer is something. And it's these beautiful beaded satin and leather harnesses with, believe it or not, ceramic dildos to match. Really? Huh. Some guys love them. I, well, I, yeah, that's I, intense. I don't think. Well, you that, know, you you put the pure wand in there, so you know. I, I do put the pure wand in there. <laughs> that's yeah. The, I find the pure and that wand is excellent. Is, that's in, yeah. But to give someone else control and, and use it in a thrusting matter is a little scary. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the whole strapless thing, you know, I've I've been, I've been pretty vocal about that recently. <laughs> well, because I wrote some an, people feel like they're failing if they can't hold it in. It's the worst mismarketing I've ever seen. It, it's false marketing. It's false advertising. And yeah. and it just irritates the hell out of me mm -hmm. because when you actually look at the numbers, very few women can hold it in. And and to it, what ends up happening is you get the less than thing. It's like, well, you know, you can buy one of these and if, you're, if your girlfriend does enough kegels, then she'll be able yeah. to hold it in. Right. And yeah. so she gets it, she tries it. She's reluctant maybe because she's like, maybe not 100% on board with this whole pegging thing. You want to give her the best experience you can. But no, you give her this thing that she can't really hold on to and it's frustrating and it slips out and she ends up, you know, thinking, wow, I've got some weak ass kegel muscles. I guess I'm a slacker, Yeah. you know? And it's just sometimes they walk away from the whole thing and say, okay, screw this. I'm not doing it. When as a receiver, when someone's trying – I mean that's that's difficult in a, in a strap-on of woman-on-woman. But you add 
anal and the difficulty factor dramatically increases. <laughs> and then the, the, the precision is very valuable, I find, for, for pegging. And so, yeah, that, um, my few experiences with a strapless strap-on have uh, had been, been wonderful. I would much rather, much rather just throw a, go, go to the store and buy a pair of underoos if that's really what we have to do. Well, yeah. And I, here's, here's what was happening. Um, people want to save money. So they're like, well, if I don't have to buy the harness, awesome. Men are sure. programmed to give women pleasure. We mentioned that previously. They want something that's going to give her some pleasure too. So they buy a double. And then she tries it. It doesn't work. And they end up at my website going, what did we do wrong? You know, I don't want to spend my time setting these people right. So I was bending the ear of none other than Metis Black of Tantus. And I was mm -hmm. bending her ear about exactly this. And she put her hand on my shoulder and stopped me and said, okay, so the Fieldo machine can make a Fieldo once every X amount of minutes. We can barely keep up production <laughs> to meet demand, okay? So if there is any area of my company that I am motivated to change my marketing, this would not be it. Yeah. And, and I continued complaining, and she said, I get you. She said, have me on a podcast. I will totally cop to it. <laughs> well, bless their hearts, what they did is they paid me, actually, to write an article called The Truth About Strapless Strap-Ons, it is posted on their blog on Tantus, and then I gave them 60 days exclusive on it, and now I've spread it all over the place and tried to educate as many people as possible. Fuse was very responsive when I contacted them. They changed it to say, you know, it's designed to do this, but you you may find that you need a harness, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they're uh, Canadian, you know, so they're, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even get a response from Fun Factory, so whatever. Oh. <laughs> uh... But yeah, How about I, Doc Johnson. When you call Doc Johnson, I don't ever call Doc Johnson. <laughs> you know. Okay, I, I do. I do slum just a little bit. Okay, here's my confession. Because when I was talking about dildos, I found a line of dildos that is made by Blush Novelties. Okay. Not the best company, right? Right. But they make a dual density line of dildos that is much more affordable. That seems to be perfectly well made, 100% silicone, and they are awesome. They're called the Real Nude line, and every one of them has a suction cup bottom. Huh. So am I contributing to a company that also makes kind of cheesy stuff? Yeah, I am. Well, it's not like you're buying from Pipe Dreams. Wow, I'm just throwing out everything. <laughs> Ooh, damn, Cooper. Ooh. Damn. Oh. My. <laughs> I know. I'm slumming a little bit. but No, no, you know. no. We all I mean, do. And and what's what's always been impressive to me about sex toys is when you can be surprised by something that is unexpectedly awesome. And so it is always great to see that because also I see a lot of these companies that before we would have gone, eh, I, I see them really, a lot of them are upping their game. They are. And yep. if they're upping their game and delivering uh, an affordable product – I, I, I don't have any issue with with supporting. Yeah, they're stepping into it. I mean, I, I suppose the only issue I have with it is that it, from a purist's point of view, <laughs> they are still producing crap stuff too. Yes. So, you know, it's it's difficult to, um, to justify that integrity-wise. But at the same time, I do like to encourage it when they make good toys. And that line of particular line of dildos has the best suction cup bottoms I've ever seen. Really, I I reviewed and and it's got a really good beginner size. It's called the Ergo Mini, and I did a review on it. And this is a pretty funny story because I tend to write late at night, and I a suction cup bottom, you know. So I go to my shower and I slam it onto the wall. <laughs> it's not wet, you know, and I have a slightly textured fiberglass wall shower. Okay, it stays no problem. So I go back to writing my review. And I, I'm for sure I'm going to hear this thing fall at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And I forget about it. And the cleaning woman comes the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
And she's in my bathroom and I'm, you know, doing the thing you do with the cleaning person where you put the jewelry away and just clean up before they come sort of and try and make it so that they're not cleaning up all of your stupid stuff. And I look over and I see the box. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, can I use the bathroom before you clean it? And she said, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, my God, that was close. <laughs> she's seen a lot of things at my house, though. Well, that's not, yeah. <laughs> I mean. At a certain point. Well, yeah, one of my, one time a bunch of friends had come over and there were some young people who were interested in the whole BDSM thing. So the people who live in this house um, are my daughter and myself. And at the time we had a roommate. And so the roommate and I have all these BDSM implements, you know, the whips and the paddles and the this and the that, right? Because I'm actually pretty kinky. No. And so we bring them all out and we talk about them and we leave them all laid out on the kitchen table, right? And once again, we all go to bed and we don't put them away. And the thing about the cleaning woman is she starts out in the living room in the kitchen and I'm still sleeping, right? So I pad out there for the coffee, look the, over the kitchen table and think, hmm. And I never said a word and neither did she. <laughs> it's a code of silence. Mm -hmm, pretty much. So, Ruby, tell our listeners where they can find all of your things. Okay, you can find me at peggingparadise.com. That is my major blog and where you can find my podcasts and everything. I've been doing that since 2010. And that combines a bit of kink with it, a fair amount. So I started another website called pegging101.com for those of you who are not into the kinky BDSM stuff. And that has all of my informational articles on it. The podcasts you can listen to directly from peggingparadise.com. You can also download them from iTunes and a whole variety of podcast downloader apps. You can find me on Twitter, Ruby underscore writer. I have a Facebook profile and a page, and the page, which is Ruby Rider, gets a thrill every time you click that like button. Oh. So there's that. If you want to send me any questions at all, you can send them to Ruby at peggingparadise.com. Or you can call and leave your question, and I will play it on my show. And it's 805-500-6544. And last but not least, these toys that I've been talking about. I have this wonderful relationship with enticeme.com, E-N-T-I-C-E-M-E.com. If you go there and buy some of the toys that we've been talking about on this podcast and use the coupon code RUBY, you get 20% off of that price. Anything over $100 ships for free. And what you're doing, if you do that, is you're supporting my work and spreading the word about pegging, which is much appreciated. The other thing that's available on my Pegging Paradise website is erotica subscriptions. I write erotic pegging stories of all types and sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. So if you subscribe to that, it's $50 a year. You get a new pegging story once a month. And if you sign up for the I Want It All, then you get access to all of my archives. I think there's like 35 to 40 stories in there now. So oh. it's quite the deal. So recently I have hooked up with Webinar Jam and I'm offering webinars so that anybody anywhere can take my class. And right now I've been informed that this podcast is going to air after my first webinar. So I don't because have a second one travel. scheduled. <laughs> because time travel. That's yeah. a great reason. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> so it's going to air after. And so I don't have a second one scheduled yet, but you can always find out when my webinars are going to be scheduled by going to my peggingparadise.com website. There is a tab education with a drop down menu. It says webinars right there, and it will have a list of them, and that's where you sign up for them. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ruby, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I feel like we've just barely scratched the surface. And well, we'll have to have you back to do another one. Well, and Cooper, you're scheduled to be on my show pretty soon. I know we haven't set a date, mm. but but you are are on the list, sir. I, I feel I feel very honored. <laughs> and we'll talk lots more about Peggy. <laughs> uh, all about the butt. <laughs> yeah, I am all about the butt. <laughs> Changing the world one ass at a time. That's my byline. Absolutely. Yeah. What was the other one again? Say that with your, your extra awesome business card phrase again. Oh, shame is the silent saboteur of sexual satisfaction. 
Ooh. That's great. Yeah, I love that one. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been a blast. Um, our pleasure. Coming. Yay! You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the swing set. Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at lifeontheswingset.com and on our site's Twitter feed at on the swing set. Email us at contact at lifeontheswingset.com. Give us a call, leave us a voicemail, send us a text, 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. When you're looking to buy condoms, buy them from Lucky Bloke, and you can buy them through us at swingsetcondoms.com. You can also visit our Patreon page to throw us some money every time we release an episode. It helps support us to continue bringing you Life on the Swings at the podcast. I'm avoiding slipping into the cadence of NPR pledge drive, <laughs> but it's not working. But you can do that at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. You can find our other great podcasts like The Gentle Pervert Social Club, Intellectual Foreplay, Sex at a Go-Go, Tell Me Something Good, and the Don't Panic podcast at swingset.fm, including very likely some new podcasts that, oh, again, because of time travel, we are not certain <laughs> will be there. So you should just go to the website. <laughs> and finally, you, you can buy my novel about swinging A Lifeless Monogamous at alifelessmonogamous.com or my memoir, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory at mylifeontheswingset.com. Both are available as an ebook, paperback, or audiobook. And if you buy them from my site, use promo code SWINGSET to save 10%. Thank you again, Ruby. Thank you, lovely panel. Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome, Cooper. <laughs> he didn't believe me last time. <laughs> and thank you, listeners, for swinging by. Hi, I'm Ruby Ryder from PeggingParadise.com and Pegging101.com, and you're listening to a Swingset Network podcast at Swingset.fm. Have a sexy business? Love the Swing Set? Let's put these two great things together. The Swing Set Network has advertising and sponsorship packages available for our websites and podcasts. Email advertising at lifeontheswingset.com for more information. Thanks. Busy. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I know what she's doing. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Speaking of which, hey, Kat. <laughs> hey, Dylan. I, uh, I know I haven't spoken... Whoa. <laughs> oh, hey, cat. <laughs> Somebody flying a sob oh, that's camel cat. over there? Oh, cat's flying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I'd thought to bring one downstairs. I, I think that was that actually night. Mr. Pent. Yeah, I'm, that Aww. was definitely Mr. Pent. He was oh. trying to get cat off. <laughs> I mean, just the, the sound vibrations. It might have well, worked, but. You know, cat, well, I I'm was feeling give you, tingly. I'll, I'll, I'll send you an <laughs> oh my bod. And you can hook it up to wow. this, and then when Pent there does we that, are. you'll actually say, hey, Ruby. There we okay, go. Okay, I'm down for that. Okay.